Hey guys, Michal Hutzko here and welcome to another video of our Pandas tutorial. In this video we're gonna talk about group by functions in the Pandas. Now many of you maybe didn't, haven't ever met with the group bys and what is a group by, but I hope there are some of you who understand the group by. To make things clear, group by is one of uh, the key functionality of Pandas to work with the big data. Uh, group bys are quite, quite common with the database systems, with the relational databases like SQL language and also in non-relational databases. Uh, let's dive right into the examples of the code into the Jupyter lab. So reading the housing prices train CSV, we will assign a, a value to a variable called DF. And as you can see, there are quite few categorical columns. When I'm talking about the categorical columns, I mean the columns with the string or word value, for example, like MS zoning. And as you can see, Amazoning has few categories. One of them is R, L, R, M, F, V, R, H, and C, which stands for all the other categories. When we want to look what does Amazoning means, we can go to data description.txd and find the Amazoning uh, value. And it identifies the general zoning classification of the sale, whether it's agricultural, commercial, uh, and, 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 and stuff like this, right? So. Now we know what the Amazoning means. And let's say we want to analyze the data of Amazoning, but group based on a certain value. So for example, let's say we want to see the mean price of each uh, uh, of the, of, for each of the uh, categorical value of the Amazoning, right? So we want to see the mean price of the Amazoning value RL or RM, which are the the residential low density and the residential medium density, for example, right? So the way how we're going to accomplish this is with the group by function. So behind the scenes, the pandas will create groups of data frames based on the value of RL, right? So for example, I will come address of this because these are just example cases. Sorry. And I will run just this one. And as you can see, what it does, well, uh, when, it, when you run it without the column selection, what it does? For each of the column, uh, for each of the group, and these are the group names based on the values of the Amazoning, because it was a categorical value, we will create a mean, right? So for example, the most interesting column for us, just remember the uh, index in this case is the name of the group, right? The most important value for us is the sale price. And as you can see, these are the average sale prices for each of the groups here above. So, so the, 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 well, and, and if you want, for example, we, you can directly, uh, like get the sale price from here and it will be much more readable because right now the re result of the group buy is a data frame. So you can operate with the data frame the same way as as uh, as before so this is the series of it right so as you can see the sale price of of fv which stands for the floating village residential is around uh two hundred fourteen thousand dollars right and all the other uh, groups are listed here below now again how does group by work uh, well, the group by uh, applies something which is called split apply combine rule. So first, the data frame is splitted across the target column, in this case, Amazoning. After that, uh, Pandas is applying a function to each of the group, in this case, a mean function. So we are computing the mean and then we are combining the results of group into one data frame. And that's the reason why the data frame is at the output. Right, so split, apply, combine, right? Very simple, very easy. You can also group by multiple columns, not just one. Uh, yeah, and before we move to this, let's see, you can you can apply different value, uh, different functions to this. For example, you can apply the count, right? And and, and there will be the count. So, so how many of the of the C uh, of the records are there for each of the group? And as you can see, this is exactly the same number as the value counts here. Right. So, so yeah, yeah. You, you understand like what is happening right now. Yes. You can put there first, which returns the first element of the group, the last, which returns the last element of the group and, and many other things. You can find all the other functions down there. So, but let's go next. 
So, so what if we want to group by two columns? So if you apply, if you put uh, into group by the uh, list of columns, which you want to apply the group by on, uh, the way is like first the data frame will be grouped across the street and then across the alley, right? And as you can see, this is the result, right? So we are asking to sum each of the elements for each of the column, uh, for each of the groups by street and alley. So as you can see, the pave, grave is the uh, uh, grvl is the first group and the pave uh, pave is the second group right because the alley can have these two values and there is just one street value right what happens if i put here amazoning i can show you so so let's just try to guess the output right so there will be doubles for each of the amazoning group yeah so as you can see if there are some so for the C, there is only PAVE in the data, but for RL, there is also GRVL and PAVE also, right? So, so you can see you are getting all the combinations of group here. And if there are no data, you are just skipping these combinations right there, right? So, so group by is very simple to apply, right? Fine. So uh, as you can see, let's, let's say you have this group assigned to a value. So the result of group by is here. What is the, mo the index in this case? So as you can see, the, in this case, is, is it the multi-index? So uh, a tuple is used as an index where the first is the value of the Amazoning and the second is the value of the alley for each of the group and the results of the group by, right? So now let's uh, look into the group by a little bit detailed. Now we want to understand it a little bit better. So what happens after you, you run these, uh, just this group by without any function, yes? So if you run it like this, a pandas core group by generic, generic data frame group by will be returned, but you don't see anything, right? If you want to look deeper, you need to assign it to a value or you just need to apply uh, attribute, you, uh, you need to ask for attribute, which is called groups. And because we are like, right now we are grouping by the Amazoning, uh, Amazoning column. And there you can see internally, pandas will represent the group by as a dictionary where the key is the name of the group for the given column, so a name of the uh, categorical value for the given column, and then the value is the list of indexes where this value was, uh, uh, was occurring, right? So you have for each of it all the indexes, and then you can, you can manually just uh, select with the lock, you know, the, the desired indexes. This is returning the desired index, I can show you. So if, if you run it like this, you will get the index and then you can, with the log, access the index of the data frame and return the desired data frame for the given group. But group by is doing this for you, so you don't need to do it, all right? So, so, so this is how it looks behind the scenes of the group by in the pandas, right? So now I just show you how you can group by, by, by rows. So the axis was set to zero. But let's say you want to group by by columns and group by by columns, it's quite often, it's quite common, a scenario in some cases when you have multiple columns and when you want to group by there by name, right? But but yes, you can put the group by there and, and the name of the column and and and, and be, be ready. But but sometimes group by by column is, is a little different. Let's have a function. So we will apply a function to a group by and this can be quite interesting. So first, let's try to understand before you say, well, it's too complicated for us. Okay, so let's have a function which uh, says if the column starts with M, so if the given column name starts with M, we are using the string building function starts with M, which returns true if this string uh, starts with the substring over here. And in this case, we are returning M column. And in other case, we are saying other column. And now look, this is the head of the data frame, right? And what we are doing here is we are grouping by this function. So this function will iterate through all of the column names and we'll replace the column name with the M column if the column name starts with M and it will replace it with other column if it starts with the other letter, right? So we are grouping by this function, applying axis one because we, this time we want to go through the columns, not through the, uh, through the rows as we did in the in previous examples. And then we are asking for the first column of it, right? And as you can see, M column, the first M column is MS subclass and the values are exactly from the MS subclass there, right? And the first non-M column is the column ID and the values of it is here, 
right? Take your time to understand this example. Now we are applying the function to the group by, right? You can also apply the group by function to the index when you are applying bit with the axis zero and you can apply some mathematical uh, arithmetical operation there. So for example, you want the index greater than zero or greater than 40 to be in the one group and less than 40 in another group. Yes, you can have a lot here. You can put here a lot of if statements and you can create a couple of groups there. Feel free to try it, apply it to the index and just just you can also share your results with the discussion. I'll be glad to have you to give you some hints how to do it properly if you are getting lost. Right now, I showed you that you can apply a function to group by like first mean and stuff like this. But in many cases, you want to apply your custom function. So a function which you create for your own groups for a specific group. So let's look at that. So how to apply a custom function to a group. So first we are grouping by MS zoning and we are assigning this value into the GRP function, right? And one of the way is to iterate through this dictionary, which I showed you up here. So now we're going to iterate through this dictionary, right? This is the lame way, right? Please don't do it. But I'm just showing you the ways how to do it. And we are iterating through key, where in this case, the key will be the, the name of the group. And then the group, which in this case will be the index. But also, this is quite neat. When you put it into the for cycle, the group will be the immediately the subselected data frame of the group. So you don't need to worry about locking, right? So I just show you the way how to do it with lock. Now you can see you can directly just access the load area of, of the group and the load frontage of the group. So this function is for each of the group summing first load area plus frontage and then returning sum of all sums of this, right? So, and these are the groups. And as you can see, this is quite not handy. It's quite like annoying to write this for against and against. So you can immediately apply, yes, so you can call an apply upon the group by and here you can specify your custom function. Now, and this is something which is called the Lambda function, which is a not name function, which can be quite complicated for you, right? So for those of you who understand the Lambda functions, you can put the Lambda function immediately here. And what does Lambda function do for those who doesn't understand? It treats for each of the group, the X as the group. So the same way as here. And, and, and then we are just summing the lot area plus frontage and returning the sum of the sums of lot area and frontage. So basically we are doing exactly the same here, the same thing as here. And as you can see, when I'm applying this function to a group by the result is the, the result of the sums for each of the group, right? The other way, the most like common way is to create a function. This is a cool way, right? One liner, you are doing it immediately. It's quite readable. You understand what you are doing. You are okay. But sometimes you want to create a, a function for this called area frontage sum, which is handling this for input of the group. And you are then passing the function to apply like this. Quite easy, quite simple. Some of you may be confused right now. Just keep, take your time, go through it, try some examples. Now, what if the group uh, by function has uh, has uh, attribute, right? In this case, you cannot use the lambda function. Well, you can, but you shouldn't, right? So how you can do it with the, with the normal way is just you are specifying the name of the attribute as a parameter of apply function because the apply function will then follow the parameters to, to, to the function, okay? So the result is the same. We are just multiplying it by two. Now, this could be quite a lot for you, the split apply combine logic in the pandas. For those of you who are quite familiar with the SQL, this is nothing new, I guess. So this is just uh, showing you how to use the syntax of pandas to reach the same results as in the databases. I hope I help you to learn something new. Uh, if, this is, if this wasn't quite clear, please leave a comment in the discussion. I'll be glad to help you with your problems. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. I hope I will see you in the next one.